Okay, in this video we're going to start talking about limits of functions with more than one variable. And so I'm going to give you two kind of definitions of this limit. One is proper and one is like kind of sketchy, but the sketchy one will be the one that we'll generally be using. This one, which is the proper one, is maybe mostly used for an advanced calculus or a real analysis type class. So here, we're going to say that the limit as x, y approaches a, b, now you could generalize this to n dimensions pretty easily if you wanted to, of this function f of x, y equals l, if f of x, y is close to l, so the output of the function is close to l when x, y is close to a, b. In other words, the input of the function is close to the value that you're taking the limit to. Okay, but the proper definition is uh, really as follows. So for all epsilon bigger than zero, there is a delta bigger than zero such that if x minus a squared plus y minus b squared all under the square root is less than delta, then f of x, y minus l in the absolute value is less than epsilon. So notice this means that x, y is close to a, b, and you can see that just by the distance formula in two dimensions. And this says that f of x, y is close to L, and this is just the distance formula in one dimension. And so for this video, we're mostly going to be concerned with showing that a limit does not exist, and in future videos, we'll look at how to show that a limit does exist. So let's start with the following example. We'll take the limit as x, y approaches the origin of x squared minus y squared over x squared plus y squared. Okay, good. And the trick here is really motivated by what you're doing in one dimension. And notice in one dimension, if you have a curve and say you're trying to find a function, sorry, you're trying to find the limit at A, um, what you need to find is the limit coming from the left and the limit coming from the right. But what we have going on here is we have a function whose domain is in the plane and whose range is like maybe up in the Z axis. And if you are limiting to a point right here, a, B, then, then there are not only two ways that you can approach this point, but there are infinitely many ways, and they all lie on a bunch of different curves. So we could come in through this orange curve, this yellow curve, we could come in through this red curve, and we could come in through this blue curve. So instead of having two directions to check this directional limit, we have infinitely many. And in fact, this is not a suitable way to calculate this type of limit, but it is a suitable way to show that this type of limit does not exist. So let's do that. So let's look at this limit, and we're going to do it two different ways. So we're going to calculate this along the x-axis first. And let's recall that the x-axis is y equals 0. So here I'll draw just the coordinate plane down here. So this is the domain of our function. The graph of our function would be above this coordinate plane. So if we're coming along the x-axis, then that means uh, we're calculating the limit along here. Great. So that means we've set y equal to zero. So that means our limit turns into the following. It turns into the limit as x approaches zero. Notice y is already zero of x squared over x squared, but that limit is like obviously one. Great. So notice these y's disappeared. Now the next thing that we want to do is calculate the limit along the y-axis. And let's recall that the y-axis is given by the equation x equals y. So just a sketch up of what ha what's happening in the domain of the function. Here we're coming along the vertical axis. So we're approaching the limiting point from those two directions. So that's going to collapse this limit to the limit as y goes to zero, because x is already equal to zero, of negative y squared over y squared, which is equal to negative one. 
So now what we've got is the limit along the x-axis is 1, along the y-axis is negative 1. So that means this limit does not exist because we have approached it from two different spots and we've gotten two different values. Um, okay, good. So now what I want to do is clean up the board, give a rule for showing that a limit does not exist, and then do a couple more examples. Okay, so here's the rule that we alluded to on the last board. So if the limit as x approaches a, b of f of x, y equals L1 along C1, which we'll call that curve 1, and if it's equal to L2, which is not L1, along a second curve, then the limit does not exist. So in the last board, we showed the uh, limit going along the x-axis and the y-axis not being the same, and so that limit did not exist. So now we're going to use a similar strategy here to show that this limit does not exist. And we'll first look along the x-axis. So recall that that's y equals zero, and that's going to turn the limit into the limit as x approaches zero of zero over x squared, which is equal to zero. Okay? Good. And so let's put a mock-up of what we're checking over here. So here we just went along the x-axis. So that is, we just calculated the limit along that path. Good. Now let's look along the y-axis, but you can probably see that we're going to get the same thing. This is the limit as y approaches 0 of 0 over y squared equals 0. And so notice those match, and so we have not yet shown that this limit does not exist. Now you might say, well, is this an indeterminate form because I have 0 over something that's going to 0, but it's not because this zero is identically zero, but this is just approaching zero. So in fact, like the cancellation happens before you take the limit. Okay, now maybe we need to go in along another curve, but we're not restricted to the axes. We can actually go along maybe this. So this will be along the line y equals x. So let's write that down. So along y equals x. So that's going to transform this thing into the limit as x goes to 0. Now notice if x is going to 0, then y is also going to 0 of x squared over x squared plus x squared. So we get that by replacing every y with an x there. But notice this limit is kind of obviously 1 half. Great, and so since one half is not the same thing as zero, we get that this limit does not exist. Okay, good. I'm going to clean up the board and then we'll do one more example. Okay, so for our last example, we want to look at the limit as xy goes to the origin of x squared y over x to the fourth plus y squared. So I'll let you guys check that the limit along the coordinate axes are zero. So what we really need to just check is um, along some other curves. So let's uh, first look along the following curve. So the line y equals, but instead of just doing y equals x, let's do y equals mx. So that's a, this is along the line of some arbitrary slope, which I'll draw in like that. Okay, so let's see what happens to the limit in that case. Here we have the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared times mx because y is equal to mx over x to the fourth plus, let's see, that's going to be m squared x squared. Great. But now notice we can factor in x squared out of the denominator, and that's going to give us mx cubed in the numerator, and then x squared, and then uh, x squared plus m squared in the denominator. We get something like that. Good, but now notice this x squared cancels this down to an x to the first power, but that gives us a limit of zero. So it looks like we get a limit of zero along every line. So now we need to move on to maybe another curve. And the next one to look at would be what about along a parabola? So along a parabola y equals x squared 
squared. Let's see what we get for that. So to sketch that up, what we have is we have a parabola here and we're taking a limit as we're approaching zero along that parabola. Okay, so let's see our limit in that case is going to be the limit as x approaches zero of, so we have x squared times x squared, so we have x to the fourth in the numerator, and then in the denominator, we have x to the fourth plus x squared squared, so that's again x to the fourth, so notice that limit is going to be one half. But now one half is not the same as zero, so we've just shown that this limit does not exist similarly to the other examples. All right, this is a good place to end.